What's up guys and welcome back to another video on SAT Math. Today's topic is all about what to do in that crunch period, what to do when you're nearing the end of the test and you absolutely have to guess. Now, here's a quick caveat. If you watch this channel regularly, you know that I am a staunch advocate of understanding the math, learning the math because you have ample time to understand the finite universe of SAT math. That being said, it's test day, you're down to the last few questions, and there's something that's got you stumped and you actually have to guess, here's how to do it effectively. I've uncovered this little tip by analyzing tons and tons of practice materials, but in particular, practice materials from the College Board, because the patterns there are the only ones that you can rely on to be replicated on the real test, because it's made by the test makers. So here is the pattern, here is the key. On the SAT, there is roughly an equal distribution of A's, B's, C's, and D's. I figured this out statistically by looking at a sample size of 10 tests, again, from the College Board. My findings show that across these 10 tests, 22.67% of the responses were A's, 27.33% of the responses were B's, 26.22% of the responses were C's, and 23.78% of the responses were D's. The range between the most common correct answer and the least common correct answer is only 3.5%. What you can glean from this piece of information is as follows. If you're nearing the end of the test and you notice that you're a little bit lopsided on the number of A's that you put or the number of B's that you put, and you're trying to decide between a couple options, you're better served to go with the answer choice that you have already chosen less frequently. So again, let's say you're on question number 13 of the no calculator section, and you're in between a couple of choices. You're feeling really confident about 10 of your answers up to that point. You take a look at those 10 answers, you see the distribution, and you can use that to inform your guessing on number 13. For example, if you notice that thus far you've gotten four A's, three C's, and three D's, you might be best served going with B. Now again, this strategy relies on the fact that you're pretty confident about those prior responses. So again, you should only be comparing against answer choices of the questions that you have a lot of confidence in. Finally, to restate one more time, this is only a backup method. I truly advocate for trying to attack these problems with understanding. And of course, remember, if you can even through logical reasoning or some math deduction, reduce one to two choices, you're already drastically increasing your chances. Knock out one choice, now you've gone from a 25% chance of being correct to 33%. Knock out two, now you got a 50-50 chance. So those are your first plans of attack, but if they fail, you can rely on this backup option of looking at the frequency distribution of your answer choices. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I wish you the best of luck on the SAT. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in the next video.